Hello everyone, I'm Rebecca Keppel and I'm super excited to be on Thermoweb's YouTube channel today. I am going to be sharing two ways to layer ink and glitter glitz gels from Thermoweb on cards to create really great backgrounds using Newton's Nook Designs stencils, stamps, and dies. So these are the two stencil sets that I'm going to be using today. I always use Pixie Spray when I'm working with stencils. It's a light tack, repositionable adhesive, and it makes stencils really easy. So one of the stencils that we're going to be using today is a layer stencil and one is a single stencil but I'm going to show you how to use both with ink and glitter glitz gel. I also always like to use my stencil pal especially when I'm working with six by six stencils. You can see that the width of the stencil pal really works perfectly on a six by six stencil. Then I'm going to grab a couple of glitz glitter gels. I'm going to use white today and then I'm also be using brilliant blue. So spray the back of your stencil with some pixie spray and then you need to let it dry. This is a really important important step because if you put the stencil down on paper while it's wet, it can tear the paper a little bit. So while it's drying, I'm going to place the cardstock on my Waffle Flower Water Media Mat, which is a great surface to stencil on and ink blend on. And I put it on the overspray of the Pixie Spray so that I can keep it in place on the Waffle Flower Water Media Mat, and then I put the stencil down on top once it's dry. So for this first version of layering the ink and the glitz gel, I'm going to first ink blend the first stencil. So this is a two-step stencil set from Newton's Nook to create an argyle look, which is one of my favorite patterns. I love plaids, I love diamonds, I love all kinds of things like that. So you can see that these stencils have guidelines to show you where to put the second stencil. So on this like little stitch to stencil there, there's lines that mimic the shape of the diamonds, making it really easy to line up the second stencil on top of what we've already ink blended that first stencil for. So this time I'm gonna use the Brilliant Blue Glitz Glitter Gel from Gina K Designs for Thermoweb. You can see there it kind of has settled in chipping, so I'm gonna use a Tonic Studios a spatula to stir it up to make sure that I have all of the gel and the glitter mixed up in a nice paste and you can see it is super smooth but when you apply it you get both the color from the gel and the color from the glitter all mixed up into one and it's absolutely brilliant blue just like the name says. For the stencil pal you want to put the gel on the flat edge. The rounded edge is for your hand. So I'm not going to use a ton here because look at the little stitched lines of the stencil. There's very tiny openings, so I don't feel like I need a whole lot. Usually I put a whole bunch of glitz gels on so that I can make sure I can get one pass and just really put this at like about a 45 degree angle and then just pull down along the stencil and check that out. I think I had plenty on there even with just that little bit of amount. So I'm going to move this out of the way just because I wanted to get on the right hand side there. It was just blocking my access a little bit. And you can see it's really easy to get a consistent coverage by using the stencil pal because you're not going in constantly with a tiny spatula. So then I peel it off and then peel it off the back of the Waffle Flower Water Medium Mat. It's got a tiny bit of dimension. I used a pretty thin application because I wanted it to dry fast. That's a tip. If you want it to dry fast, use a thin application. If you don't mind waiting, use a thicker application and you can get some dimension as well as the glitz shine. Okay, so for the second way of doing this, I'm going to use a stencil that's called Balloons from Newton's Nook, and this is just one stencil. It's not a layering stencil. I am going to use three colors of Distress Oxide ink, and I'm going to put them down in just kind of an organic pattern where I'm just putting blobs of color because they're going to just blend into each other and create a really beautiful ombre, which I absolutely adore. So now I'm using Kitsch Flamingo. Mango. I started with squeezed lemonade. These two colors together are some of my favorites. I love this pink and this yellow together. I just think it's so much fun. And I noticed that they create a little bit of orange in between. So then I went in with some orange as well to create just a third color there. So I am just 
throwing some color down. I'm not really being specific about where I'm putting which color. I just want a little bit of each, a little bit of crossover, and to create just kind of a fun mishmash of these three colors. Once that's done, I'm gonna keep the stencil in place this time because I'm only using one stencil and I'm gonna use quite a bit more of the white Glitz Glitter Gel because I really wanna cover up all these balloons. So the white is, if you use a thin enough application, it's not going to cover the color, but it is gonna to tone it down just a little bit. And you can see that because there's some liquid in the Glitz gel, it will activate those Distress Oxides a touch. Not too bad though. And that's why it's important to use colors that blend well together and don't create brown unless that's what you're going for. Here, I was looking for a birthday theme. I wasn't really looking for brown. So I made sure to use the pink and the orange and the yellow, which will blend really well together, even if they start to smear a little bit while I'm adding the Glitz Gel. There was just one tiny little balloon that just wouldn't get covered at the corner here. So I used <laughs> a little bit of a spatula. And just check that out. It just kind of pulls the three colors together, makes them blend beautifully, and then adds that sugary texture on top and all that shine. I absolutely love this technique. I'll be doing it again and again and again. To finish these cards, I did decide to use Newton's Nook birthday stamp set, which is like this circle of tiny little images all together. So I stamped two of these on white cardstock with Copic Friendly ink, and now I'm cutting it out with their circle frames die. It's the largest of that set. It's got a scallop on the outside. I'm going to cut both of them out with that scallop die. I'm gonna hold it in place because I really want it to be exactly where I want it to cut. So I'm gonna hold it in place with some purple tape and then run that through my die cut machine. I'm just gonna line it up exactly where I want it and put the purple tape and then I like to press on the outside so that it really stays stuck down. Once everything was die cut and the ink and the glitz was drying, I pulled them out together so that I could mimic the colors that was inside those stenciled backgrounds when I did the coloring of these little images. So for the one on the right, I am using a combination of pinks and yellows and some light oranges to color in this birthday circle. This is such a cute stamp set. I love all of the tiny little images in one circle and you don't have to do a lot of blending or shading, you just color them in. I cut the circle just a little bit on one side so that I could have it off to the right hand side of my panel because I didn't want to cover up all those balloons. I <laughs> love how they turned out. Then I stamped a happy birthday sentiment from the stamp set and put it on a little strip of cardstock and then pop that up on the left hand side so it just laid on the circle on the right hand side. Super, super simple. I'm going to do a similar thing on the other circle. I'm going to color this circle with blues and some greens. I have a number of light greens and kind of uh, bright greens and then a dark blue and some really light blues. And I'm just going to color all these images in. Again, you don't have to do a lot of fancy coloring here. You could on some of the balloons and stuff, get some shading and blending, but I just wanted to color the images in and it's, they're tiny enough that you don't need to do a lot of fussy coloring coloring, just have some fun with them. And then I am popping the entire circle up this time on some Gina K Designs for Thermoweb white foam squares so that I can place them right on the Argyle background. And then my sentiment at this time is make a wish that I popped up right in the center of that circle. So that is just two different ways to layer inks and Thermoweb's glitter glitz gels on top of each other to create really fun backgrounds. If you're interested in any of the supplies that I use today, they will all be linked down below. I want to thank you so much for stopping by. Have a wonderful day.